the house today. Come on. Come on. What an honor for us to have him today. What an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Lou. Uh, I was going to call him Luis. <laughs> Thank you, Brother James, for this opportunity and this honor to be here. And I want to present my wife, Marcia, who's been my steady companion for years and years. And uh, we call her, and when we worked in the International Church in downtown Rome, uh, we had about uh, 500 people in this church, and one-third were African, and one-third were Asian, and one-third were European. So um, we enjoyed our multi-ethnic church in Rome. I, and I also, we also pastored Italian, an Italian church. So I have actually preached in Italian more than I have in English. And, uh, and Marsh has been my faithful companion all this time. So uh, uh, we want to thank this church also for your faithful support. I, uh, I was looking through the uh, report, uh, financial report that we get from our network, and, and there was Carisma, or that's how I say it in Italian, Carisma Christian Center. And uh, I noticed that you are supporting us, and I want to thank you. Marsh and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, I want to give a gift to anyone that wants it. It's, this is free. It's a gift. Uh, I wrote a book on spiritual fatherhood. If you need advice on how to be a better father, I've got about uh, 10 copies down there where Marsh is sitting. And so after the service, just take one and take it home with you and, and read it. And it's been published in uh, two other languages, Albanian and Italian. And uh, so it's, uh, it's my effort to, uh, uh, to be a blessing to you. And um, I would just, would you like to say something, just a word or two? Yeah. What a joy to be here. Uh, I love the presence of God. I feel so refreshed. There's no place I would rather be on a Sunday morning than a place just like this, worshiping the Lord. What a privilege we have to uh, shout our praises, clap our praises, sing our praises. Um, to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you. Now I brought my, my big paper Bible, and I'm going to preach from Isaiah chapter 37. And if they have it on the, uh, on the computer to look at the verses, uh, we can read those in a little bit. I'm going to give you a background of what's happening here in Isaiah chapter 36. You know, and, and then I'm going to read those verses in Isaiah chapter 37. Uh, Isaiah chapter 37, and it's, uh, let's see here, the first, um, the first uh, seven verses of Isaiah chapter 37, and maybe we can read them together if they can find it. But let me give you the situation. How many know that we have the enemy of our souls that seeks to destroy us? Yeah, that's right, he's out there all right, you know. And uh, this, uh, this story uh, is about Jerusalem under attack. Now, you know, it was a very, it was a historical fact. You know, there's some people that say, well, how can you believe the Bible? It's an old book written by a bunch of old guys that lived a thousand years ago. Well, let me tell you this. this. The Bible is the authentic word of God. And even though this story is talking about, and by the way, this story in Isaiah chapter 37 is very historical. History books tell you that Zennacherib was the king of Assyria, and history books tell you that Hezekiah was the king of Jerusalem, of Judea, and this story that we see in Isaiah 37 really happened in the year 701 B.C., and uh, it's more than just a historical story of Jerusalem being under siege, under attack, but it's a, everything you read in the Bible, there's a there's a, a spiritual type. What that means is that you can take a story like this, a true historical event, and you can draw spiritual truth from it. Jerusalem was under attack. Well, Jerusalem is kind of like the church of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the enemy will attack the church of Jesus Christ, like the enemy has tried to do uh, around the world. Over 350,000 believers last year were martyred for the cause of Christ around the world. And places like Iran and Iraq and Syria and places like that and North Africa. But you know, Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Okay? Amen. That's right. And uh, we're going to see here this situation and is, is this, is that this big king by the name of Zennacherib, he launched his army to, against Jerusalem. He was going to attack the people of God. Now, you know, Jerusalem can also be your, your home. Sometimes Satan attacks your home, but 
through this scripture, we also learn that God will give you the victory. Or maybe Satan will attack your, your health or, or you personally. But remember this, as uh, Sister Sharon quoted from Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8, nothing will separate us from the love of God. It doesn't matter what your battle is, God will give you the victory. Because all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So here's the situation in 701 B.C. This huge army of 185,000 soldiers came and they surrounded the city of Jerusalem. And so the people that lived in Jerusalem and they couldn't go out and they couldn't come in. And there's a, there's a tunnel that you can walk through. Go to, go to Jerusalem and ask for Hezekiah's tunnel. I did it. <laughs> And uh, what they did is they, they, they dug a tunnel uh, from outside. They used to get their water source outside the wall, and they dug the tunnel underneath the wall so the water would come into the city of Jerusalem so that during the siege they had fresh water. This is called Hezekiah's Tunnel, and I remember walking through that tunnel. So if you go to Jerusalem, walk through the tunnel, and you can see, you can see where Hezekiah dug this tunnel out when they were under siege. So anyway, the enemy is very, very astute. You know what the enemy does? Some of the tactics of the enemy is intimidation. He will try to frighten you. In fact, uh, there was this big cheese, this big man that was sent by Zennacherib. He was called the Rabshaki. Rabshaki. It sounds, it sounds almost Japanese, but I'm sure it's not. And this Rabshaki, he, uh, he came down and he says to, uh, to the people in Jerusalem, he says, Okay, you people, surrender. We've got you surrounded. You have no hope. You know, we, we are armed. You don't have arms. And so intimidation was the first thing. And, you know, Rob Shockey, he was uh, the Rob Shockey. He was used to being addressed as Rob Shockey, you know, Rob Shockey, <laughs> Rob Shockey, you know. And uh, so he was he felt he was really tough. He felt he was bigger than God, bigger than the people of God. And he began to intimidate at the wall. Not only, not only that, but he, he used fear and he used, he used lies. He said, um, hey, I heard from God. False prophecy. Hey, God told me to come and attack Jerusalem and destroy you. Well, you know what? That's what the devil does as well. Intimidation. Lies. Another thing that this Rabshaki did was, hey, you don't even have an army. In fact... Judah didn't have even an army back in those days. They lost a lot of uh, soldiers and other wars in throughout the northern part of Judea. And so here's this guy saying, you have no army. In fact, I tell you what, Rob Shockey says, I tell you what, we'll even loan you 2,000 horses. But you don't even have 2,000 soldiers that can ride to 2,000 horses. You're weak. You're poor. You don't have an army. You don't have any alliance. And they had Egypt that was going to be an alliance with them. And Egypt gave up. And so they found themselves completely surrounded by this huge army of 185,000 people. Now that's a problem, isn't it? You know, and sometimes you might feel completely surrounded by the enemy and you just do not know what to do. And the enemy comes and he tries to intimidate. He tries to make you scared. He makes fun of you. He mocks you. And then... He also mocks your leaders. Hey, and then this is, you don't need to listen to King Hezekiah. He doesn't know what he's doing. And so King Hezekiah, he sent some of his men out of, out of the wall to talk to this Rabshaki. And they said, uh, what do you want? And Rabshaki said, we, wanna, we want you to surrender. And they said, I tell you what, just, just speak in Aramaic because we don't want the people on the wall to hear um, you know, to hear the Hebrew language that their lives are threatened. So this Rob Shockey said, oh yeah? So Rob Shockey gets up on his horse and he starts to yell at the people on the wall in the Hebrew language, hey, we're going to conquer you. We're going to kill you. You are dead meat. You know, and so all the people on the wall were thinking, wow, we're in trouble. Now let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a situation where the enemy says to you, you're dead meat? I'm going to attack you. I'm going to destroy you. Oh, yeah. I've had that happen to me when we were on the mission field. Times when we just felt so alone, so surrounded by other forces. But you know something? Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, uh, you know, I, I love the book of Isaiah because there's so many things in that book of Isaiah that, that uh, support, support the kingdom of God and give us counsel. 
and, uh, and you can go from the very beginning of the, of the book of Isaiah where, where it says that a comforter has come and, and, he's, and his name will be called wonderful. A baby has come. His name was, is called wonderful, counselor, prince of peace. A, a baby will be born. There is an answer. There's a savior for the world. Well, so this rub shock, he said, don't believe your king. We're going we're gonna to kill you. But I want you to know that uh, Satan has his weapons, but the people of God have their weapons also. Now we're going to look at the weapons of the kingdom of God, of the people of God. Oh, there you did. You found it. Let's read the first seven verses together, shall we? All right. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says. This day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear the words of the field commander, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to, the, to ridicule the living God, and that he will rebuke him for the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, pray for the remnant that still survives. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard. Those words with which the underlings of King Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country, and there I will have him cut down with a sword. I think that was verse 7, wasn't it? Oh, maybe one more. When the field commander heard that the, uh, that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. <laughs> okay, we'll read one more. Now, Zenekadib received a report that Tirhaka, the king of Cush, was marching out to fight against him. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah with this word. And then there's a long, a long letter. And I'll talk about that letter, okay? So, God will never leave you without weapons. When the enemy comes in, he has his weapons. Intimidation, fear. He will mock your God. He will mock your leaders. He will say, you are, you are weak, you are poor, you have nothing. But what, what do we have as believers? First thing, and you saw that in the very first verse we read. When Hezekiah heard that he was under attack, he tore his clothes. And what did he do? He went into the house of the Lord. You know what? If you need the help of God, the very first step is to humble yourself before the Lord. You have problems, just humble yourself before the Lord. And that's what he did. He went into the house of God. He got on his knees and he said, oh God, I need you. I can't do anything. I need your help. And he repented of his sins. Oh, God, forgive me of my sins. Everything I've done wrong, I need you. I can't live without you. But you know what? That's the first step to victory in your life. Repentance. Just saying, God, I cannot live without you. I repent of my sins. Please help me. That was the first thing that Hezekiah did. And that's a pretty good thing to do, isn't it? He waited upon the Lord. And I love what old Isaiah says. You can read it back and forth. Some people say, well, how can you believe the book of Isaiah? You know something? You can get a, take a thousand bucks if you have it, buy a ticket and go to Israel, uh, take ten bucks and take a bus from Tel Aviv to uh, Jerusalem, go to the Museum of the Scrolls, and you can go in and see copies of the Old Testament that were written 200 years before Christ. One copy that's very interesting is the Scroll of Isaiah. There we have a copy of the book of Isaiah that was written 200 years before Christ that has these very same words that say, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And upon Him, no, uh, his, the chastisement of us all was upon Him. And, and through Him we have peace and we have salvation. Those are the words of Isaiah that were written, copied from the original book 200 years before Christ that prophesy about the baby Jesus that was to be born. Unto us a child is given, unto us is a, a, a son is given, and upon his shoulders will be uh, the government uh, of, of, of all the worlds. And, and uh, his name is Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's another verse in Isaiah chapter 40 that I really love. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Can I just read that section just a little bit? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
This may be your problem this morning. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. Do you feel weak this morning? He will give power to you. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So what do we say? Teach me, Lord, to wait upon you. So that's how Hezekiah was able. That was the weapon, the first weapon he used. You know, another weapon that Isaiah had was teamwork. You feel alone? Remember this, you're not alone. There's the body of Christ that will help you. Do you remember Elijah? One time he thought he was alone. Uh, read the story about Elijah. He, uh, he conquered 450 Baal worshipers on Mount Carmel, and then he, he ran for his life because this queen Jezebel wanted to kill him. Actually, I think that's kind of funny. You know, this woman wanted to kill him. I thought, you know, anyway, it's probably not funny. So he was running for his life. I mean, after he conquered the, the, uh, the, uh, the priest of Baal, he was, he was scared of this, this Jezebel. And he sat under the tree and he said, oh, God, I want to die. What do you want to die for, Isaiah? Elijah, what do you want to die for? Because I'm the only one left. And it's just me, all by myself. I want to die. And the Lord said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There are still 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed the knee, the knee to Baal. You're not alone. You've got a team. You've got a team to work with. You see, you have a team. And that team is your Charisma Christian Center. And it's the body of Christ. You're not alone. We are a team. We work together. And, and, I, and uh, this is what Hezekiah realized. He thought, boy, I need help. Hey, there's a man here in Jerusalem by the name of Isaiah. I'm going to call on Isaiah. Hey, let me tell you something. If I was in trouble and Isaiah was living down the street, I know who I would call to pray. I would get on my cell phone right away and say, Isaiah, I need help. Would you pray? Now, what kind of a man was Isaiah? Isaiah was a man who walked with God. Not only that, Isaiah saw the Lord. Wow. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah writes, in the, key, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and mighty and lifted up, and His train filled the temple, and the seraphim cried out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. That's what Isaiah saw, a great man of God. So Isaiah said, hey, don't worry, don't worry. You know, another weapon that, uh, another weapon that we have is the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Isaiah said, the Lord says. Hey, there's another thing that people say. How can you believe the Bible? It's an old book. Let me tell you something. In the Old Testament, over 360 times, it says, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. It's the Word of God. And is there anything more powerful than the Word of God? No. No, nothing more powerful. And so Isaiah says, Thus saith the Lord, Do not be afraid. And that's what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Thus saith the Lord. You've got problems in your home. Thus saith the Lord. You have problems at your work. Thus saith the Lord. Do not be afraid. For lo, I am with you, and I will be with you always, and I will give you the victory. That's kind of an interesting thing. We read just a little part of it up here. Oh, there you have Isaiah 6. That's cool. This uh, king, Zanechariah, brought a letter, and he had it delivered to Hezekiah. And basically, you can read about it in chapter 37 and say, Hey, Hezekiah, you're dead meat. Surrender. I'm going to conquer you. You're finished. And don't believe... Don't believe your God. And in fact, all through that letter in, in Isaiah 37 that Zennacherib wrote, Zennacherib wrote, he said, don't trust your God. Don't trust your God. That's basically the message that Zennacherib said, and said. And that's what people or that's what the enemy of our souls would say. Don't trust your God. 
So we have to make a decision. Do we trust our God? Or do we trust the voices of the enemy? And that's what Isaiah had to do. And so Isaiah took this letter, piece of paper, and where did he go? He went back into the temple. And he took the letter and he laid it out on the altar of God. And he says, Lord, there it is. There it is. There's the letter from Zennacherib. He says not to trust you. And this is the decision that Hezekiah made. He said, I'm just making, I, I'm imagining what he, what he would say because this is what I would say. Lord, we are weak. Lord, we have no money. Lord, we have no alliance. We are alone. We have no army. We are surrounded. They say we are not to trust you, but Lord, I want you to know this. I trust you. I believe in you. I will not leave you. I believe that you are the only answer. And you know something? Many times we have to say that. Lord, I trust you. The enemy will say, don't trust, but I trust you no matter what. And the Lord said, and there's a verse here, I'll read it. Verse 21. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word of the Lord that is spoken concerning him. I will answer you. I will answer you, and I will defeat Zennacherib. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen? There's another verse in uh, Isaiah 59 that I want to read just in conclusion here. Isaiah 59, verse 19, I believe it is. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I like the name Charisma Christian Center because you want the presence of the Holy Spirit here. He is here. When the enemy comes to attack you, humble yourself before the Lord, and he will raise up a standard against the enemy and give you victory. Shall we just stand in a moment of prayer? Praise you, God. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Is there anyone that would just like to admit this morning, I feel surrounded. I've got problems that only God can solve. And I'm not going to ask you to come forward. We're going to have communion in just a, in just a moment or two. But this is your moment to humble yourself before God like Hezekiah had to humble himself. And he had to say, God, without you, I, I have no future. I need you, Lord. I have a problem that only you can solve. And if you're in that situation, I just want you to raise your hand just very briefly. Just raise your hand. I need God to help. Yes. I see many hands. <laughs> many hands. We're in a situation... We've got a problem that only God can solve. Amen. You can put those hands down now. The enemy would say, you're weak. You're defeated. There's no hope. But what can we do? We can go into his presence. And we can say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, you're greater than the enemy. You're greater than the devil. You're greater than the enemy of our souls. We pray for freedom. We pray for victory. Hallelujah. And you're not alone. You can have others pray with you. Like Hezekiah had Isaiah pray with him. You're not alone. You have a body of believers. And it says at the very end of this, when Hezekiah demonstrated his trust in the Lord, the Lord said, because you prayed, I will answer. And oh, by the way, Hezekiah, the next day when he woke up, that entire army was destroyed. The Lord destroyed the army of uh, Zennacherib and liberated the city of Jerusalem by a miracle, by the powerful hand of God. And he could do the same thing for you. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray, shall we?
Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who raised their hands this morning. Lord, some are fighting battles that only you can solve. Lord, I pray for those who need healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Not by our authority, but by the authority of the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. For those who are suffering problems at home, of other kinds of sicknesses, other kinds of problems, Lord, you can resolve those in the name of Jesus. For employment or for work or situations, Jesus, you can give them victory. And most of all, for those who do not have peace in their heart, help them to call upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm going to give the microphone back to the pastor, Pastor James, and I know that the Holy Spirit is going to continue to work as we take the Holy Communion here this morning. Let's let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. In Jesus' name. I believe you may be seated at this moment. Wow, what a powerful message. I'd like to call on the communion servers to come. Here at Charisma, you don't need to be a member of this church as long as you confess and believe that Jesus is, is Lord and Savior of your life. Please wait for one another to be served. Can we sing, Holy Spirit, we are welcome you. Let's just welcome God today. When you feel surrounded, your focus is sometimes on what surrounds you. But for us believers, we just need to look what in the inside of us, the Holy Spirit is living in you. And He's greater than what's against you today. Let's just connect and open our hearts to Him. As Pastor Terry said, humble yourself before the Lord. You are in the right place. You're in the house of God. And then we're going to cry out to God. This is the greatest example of God's power. Jesus was crucified. He was buried for three days. And He rose from the dead. And that same power that made Jesus rose from the dead is the Holy Spirit and is alive and living in the inside of us. Can let's just welcome the Spirit today as we sing this song. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing like the Holy Presence of God. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and I've seen. Tasted at sea of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Rise up, stand up as we worship your presence, Lord. Welcome Him today, Let's Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome to comfort this place and fill the 
of the symbol of the body of our Lord for I receive from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the symbol of the broken body of Jesus Christ. Let's lift up the cup of salvation, the symbol of the blood of the Lamb. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. That whenever you drink it, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's partake the symbol of the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to praise Him today, church. Hallelujah. Let's begin to thank Him in advance for the victory. Yes, we're attacked. Yes, we're harassed, we're facing battle, but praise God, victory is ours in Jesus' name. Victory is ours in Jesus' name. Our God never lose a battle. And through our God, we have overwhelming victory in Christ. We're not strong, but in Christ, we're more than conquerors. We have struggle, but in Christ, we are an overcomer. We have issues, but in Christ, we have all the answers to all our issues. It's not because of who we are, it's because of whose we are. We are in Christ. And what's inside of us is greater than any force that's outside of us. God, we thank you for this historical story of victory that you've given to King Hezekiah. When he was in trouble, he did not call the armed forces. He did not call the armies, Lord. He went down on his knees and he called on the name of Jesus. He called on the name of the Lord. And he went to your house and he asked for your help, oh God, and you deliver. Help us, Lord, to remind ourselves it's simple as that. 
we don't need to complicate it. We go down on our knees. We go to the house of Jesus. Surround ourselves with the right team, with God's people. And we declare and we confess and we will see the hand of the Lord will deliver us from all our enemies. Thank you for this great reminder to all of us today. In Jesus' name, in all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a clap of praise today. Thank you, Pastor Terry, Sister Marcia, for 